Hi friends, welcome back to Code Legend. This is a continuation of our previous video related to the exceptions handling in C Sharp. So if you are new here, please check out that video to understand how we can handle exceptions properly in C Sharp. So in continuation to that, in this video, we will try to see how we can create a user defined exception instead of using the general compiler generated exceptions and we will try to use the same demo application which we created in the previous video and try to insert some new user defined exceptions there to handle our business logic. So let's get started. So first we will see how we can create a user defined exception. So user defined exception is nothing but it's a simple class uh, how we normally create a class the only special thing which we need to do is we need to derive it from the system dot exception class so once we derive it from the exception class normally this class will behave like an exception so that is a user defined exception so one more good practice is to define a constructor and from the constructor you need to call the base constructor and if you are accepting some message pass that message to the base constructor also so this is how we create a simple user defined exception as a coding practice whenever you are creating an application and you are defining some user defined exceptions try to end the class name with the word exception so here you can see how i am using class my new exception so the ending is exception so like that you need to end the exception it's not mandatory but it's the actual coding standards which are followed across the industry so let's see a demo let's get into visual studio and see how we can create and use these user defined exception so here in visual studio we are using the same code which we used for our previous video so to just replicate our real-time application scenario we have a main method so this is nothing but our user interface kind of uh, class and from here we are going into a business logic layer one level then we are going into a business logic layer two level and finally we are going into a database layer so this is how the complete flow is there so in this it is simple classes but maybe in your real-time application it will be uh, different projects or the classes might be in different DLL so just to create that hierarchy we are using here simple classes so now we have some method uh, some code here which is like it accepts a name and email from the console and creates a user and saves it into database and if at all any exception occurs it will be handled here so till now whatever exceptions we were using uh, were like the compiler generated exceptions provided by dotnet framework so now let's create some uh, user defined exceptions to handle our business logic so let's see what scenario we can handle so when we come to our uh, maybe database layer so it might happen like uh, when you are creating a new user the email id already exists in the database and the database might throw an uh, error back to you saying that this user already exists so such kind of scenario might occur so since we are not dealing with the exact database here let's try to replicate that scenario so instead of throwing this error from here let me check if at all the user unit which is passed it has a email id which is equal to something like abc at gmail.com so we'll try to hard code this so in this case we want to notify to the user that this particular user already exists so let's try to create a new exception a user defined exception and handle this scenario so for that i will add a new class here let me name it as user exists exception and let's derive this from the exception class so this particular step is mandatory and now let's create a construction constructor for this particular exception class so i am creating a user exists exception uh, constructor and i am accepting a message here from the user so this message will be shown finally to the uh, user and i will call the base class and i will pass the same message which i have got in this constructor to my base so here what i'll do is 
uh, if I want to log something or do something in this constructor, I can do that. Uh, for time being, I will don't want to do any functionality here. I'll just create this and leave it. So now in this case where this particular user already exists, what I'll do is let me create a exception. So that means like let me generate an exception from here. So throw new user exists exception and I will pass the message saying that this user already exists. So this is the exception message which I am passing. So now to handle this currently in the program level when you reach here so you have file not found exception you have null reference exception you have general exception so maybe this exception will get handled here and this message will be shown so instead of that let's try to create our own uh, another catch block for this particular user exists exception and let's show the message directly here so now when you run this when you are using some other email id so let's use john first and john at gmail.com so everything goes fine it says user created successfully now let's try to execute it once more time and this time let's give the name as abc and let's give abc at gmail.com now this is the one which we have hard coded inside so this user already exists so now it goes into the exception case of our uh, user exist exception uh, block and from there we get an error saying that this user already exists so this is how we are handling the user created exceptions so this way you can create your own user defined exceptions and you can handle them uh, using catch blocks your own catch blocks and you can cre uh, catch your own specific exceptions instead of handling with the general exception but it's a general practice like finally to use a general exception also because it might happen like you in the runtime there might be a scenario wherein you are not anticipating any of this scenario but suddenly some other scenario occurred and uh, some other type of exception has thrown so in that case if at all you are this particular catch is not there then your application might crash so it's a good practice to have individual catch blocks specifically for these exceptions which you are looking but as a safety net you need to have this particular exception block also so that if at all these are not able to handle the type of exception then at least finally this will be sorted out with this particular block but majority of the cases try to have as many catch blocks as possible based on your different scenarios your different business logic exceptions all those uh, which you are expecting and as a precaution just have this exception as well so i hope uh, this video was useful and you got an uh, understanding how you can create your own exception so based on the business logic you can create as many exceptions you want and make your application more rich thank you